Hi, I'm Danny from Danny Girl Art, and today I'm going to work on a apprentice tile, a four and a half inch square, um, or you can pre-cut a piece of paper. And we're going to do a naughty Christmas tree. So I, for this tile, held mine on a slant. So this is an option that you can do. And I'm gonna be using lots of supplies today uh, to give you a variety of choices, but feel free just to use one of the mediums or experiment and use all of them. So this time for the demonstration, I am going to hold my tile as a square. Again, I'm using an apprentice Zentangle tile, but I'm gonna hold it as a square and work this way to give you some options. Some of the supplies that I'll be using are um, a variety of colored pencils, and I'll talk more about those in a little bit. I have a drawing pencil, and I have my microns. I'm going to use a black PN and a O1. I have a green water-based um, marker. Off the screen, just I'm a little bit out of room here. I have some watercolors and I'll bring those on in a little bit. I have a stardust. I have some jelly rolls. Um, I have a silver one. I have a white charcoal and a white jelly roll. These are not, you don't need to use all this. This is just some things I'm sharing with you and you can use all of them, you can use two of them, you can use completely different supplies also. So have fun with it, that's the most important thing. You're not here to create something identical to mine, just enjoy yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna start on my tile and this is um, inspired Zentangle, Z-I-A, Zia. So there will be some more pencil work than uh, in traditional Zentangle style. And there will also um, maybe even be a little bit of racing. So I'm gonna start with a triangle and I wanna leave some room on the top for a star and a bunch of auras. So I'm gonna come down a little bit and just press lighter than me. I'm gonna press a little bit darker for the camera. I'm going to add a triangle here. From here, I'm going to aura and decide how thin or wide you want your knot. So I'm going to come down a little bit and add a aura to this triangle. And I'm going to have this triangle flip like a mirror image. So this triangle, we'll, we're not gonna work off of that right now. We're going to now aura the right side of the bottom triangle. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to turn this into another triangle. And I would recommend keeping the spaces, the aura lines of equal distance about. So if this is straight up again, I am going to now add an aura on this side. Don't worry if it's not centered. Maybe you purposely want to make it off centered. Okay, closing that triangle off. So I have, um, I have four triangles here, and at the top of my triangle, I am going to pencil in a star-ish shape, and I'm going to have it connect to the point of my top triangle. And then I'm gonna to start to add some of my aura lines to make this look like a knot. So the first thing I'm going to do from this line right here, I'm going to bring this out and I'm going to curve it up along this top triangle. When I get to the star, I'm going to aura the shape of the star. And turn your tile as you do this. I, when I'm doing the demonstrations, those of you that have taken classes with me, you know I, I try to keep 
the tile straight when I can. So it's easier for you. But if I was working on my own, I would definitely be rotating my tile. So I'm going to come all the way around to the right side and I'm going to stop there. Going back to the area I started, this section right here where the top and the bottom triangle meet, I'm going to connect these two, close them off. Okay, so the bottom left triangle, I am going to add an aura to the left. I'm going to come around and pass that opening and curve it up to this line. The opening of the bottom left triangle here, I'm going to curve it and connect. So this piece looks like it's in front now. All right. So let's go to the next spot. This center section here, I'm going to come over. So now this looks like it's in front. And I'm going to aura the right side and come around the bottom. And the last thing that we'll need to do is this right here, we will close off. So how cool is that? We have a knotty tree. And I am going to pick up a black Micron PN. And if you need to erase anything or switch things around, feel free to go, go ahead and do that. I'm now going to redefine all of these pencil lines with my black PN. Most important thing for, for me is for you to have fun. So there's no stress with this. Have fun, change things around. Feel free to follow along exactly or make it your own, but be kind to yourself and just have fun. The size of all of ours are probably going to vary. Some might be smaller. Yours might go off the page. So cool, love it. So I don't know if this has ever been done, but I was laying in bed and this idea popped into my head and I didn't know if it would work. So when I got up um, a few weeks ago, I tested it out and um, sure enough, I was pleased with the results. It made me happy. So I went with it. Okay, so on the bottom, I am going to add a tree trunk. I could go off the page if I want to, or I can stay off uh, on the page. Here I have a lot of room at the bottom, so it fit pretty nicely. Um, here I don't have that much room, but I'm going to, I want mine to stay on my page. So it's just going to be a shorter tree trunk. So you could leave your tree trunk like that, or at the bottom on one of the sides, you could have a little diagonal line and then an aura coming up if you wanna give it a little dimension. Okay, so now I'm gonna aura the entire shape that I've created here. So it doesn't matter where you start, this aura I'm going to do thinner and I'm still using my black Micron PM.
Okay, from here, I'm going to go in and add some jetties. So I am going to start with orbs and I am going to think on the bigger side, the larger side, and I'm going to start inside of one of these triangles. And I'm going to have them supersized. And they don't all, each section does not have to have the same amount of orbs. Okay, so it looks like I, and this is how it worked out for me last time, three seemed to be the magic number for me. And these little back pieces, I can go in as I am drawing the outside part of these jetties and ink these in. So I'll continue this and I'll do this in the next three triangles as well. And as you can see, mine got a little off, but that's fine. It'll work out. Kind of trying to imagine where these lines would go. Sometimes just the tiniest little inking in area can make a big difference. My last section. Okay, so from here, I am going to do the inside of my jetties and I'm going to switch to a Micron 01 in black. And feel free to do any type of patterns you want. I'm going to keep on mine for these jetty-like ornaments. I'm going to keep one element the same that I'm going to have this curved aura line along the top and bottom of each of my jetties. So pick patterns that you want to uh, put in and you can repeat patterns. I'm going to start with a print up here. And I like to have my Aura lines not all going in the same direction. And I'm going to add some up and down zigzags and an aura in each one and ink in that aura. That'll give me a little bit more contrast. And I'm going to 
do do da so a line coming down and up again picking whatever designs you would like and adding my aura you could do all your auras first if you wanted to i'm going to do a mocha and then i'm going to do a upside down mocha going back and forth maybe you want to ink in those back pieces you want more darkness and this jetty you're not going to see the top of my aura and i'm going to repeat my print on i don't have to have a different pattern in each one you can repeat i know on my christmas tree at home i do have repeating you know i have a bunch of the same ornaments kind of as like my main filler ornaments i'll do one more i'll do a scallop And then some lines in between. And as I get to the side, maybe add a little bit of a curve following the aura of the outside of the jetty. So let's continue on filling in all of our jetties. Go at your own piece. Pause the video if you need to. I kind of blended in. So what I could do is I could take a white jelly roll and make a little white line there. And I seem to really enjoy the print stamp, <laughs> just as I always enjoy print stamp and tangling. The last one. Okay. All right, so I'm going to 
switch back um, to my PN. And at this point, if you have any lines that you want to erase, as long as your ink is dry, I invite you to go ahead and do that. All right, um, on this one, I did keep go, but I don't have too much room here on my tree trunk. So I'm simply just going to add um, some just lines coming down. So maybe I can have a little sparkle in some of them and then maybe turning them to go straight and then curving towards the other side. And I'm going to go along the outside close to the edge of my tile. And using my black micron PN, I'm going to add a border. And if you bump into something, make sure that you hollow that and draw behind. And I'm going to make another aura, but this time I'm going to use, do the tangle bead line. And I'm picking up a gold Sakura jelly roll. And I'm going to make a gold border going around kind of doubling it up a little bit. And as I do this, I'll start with a series of three little dots, leaving some space in between going on this line. So I'll continue my line. And you could go around and do the whole solid line first. The reason I am not doing it that way is because of um, not wanting to smear um, this jelly roll. So I'm doing it in sections. So for me, it's easier, but you do it how you feel is comfortable for you. So I thought these little gold bead lines were a little festive touch. Being careful not to smudge. Maybe one and the others are behind there. I got a little close to my black line. That's all right. Okay, pretty. Looks much more gold in person than it does on the screen. So I'm gonna cap my um, jelly roll and just be careful and give this a moment. We want this nice and dry. And I'm going to pick up my Micron PN again. And when I feel comfortable to, I'm going to now add another border on the other side of the line, bead line. So I'm keeping my hand off of my paper, just in case that gold is still wet. Making sure you hollow bar behind things. So if you watched my previous video, I did Luminex and I'm gonna do that again. 
in a grid and I'm going to switch to an O1 and I'm going to have a really light touch with this. Um, I don't want it to be so overwhelming. So I'm just, it seems like my gold is a little dry so I could put my hands on here. So in the background with a light touch with my O1, I am going to start with some vertical lines. And I'm going to turn and go in the other direction to make these delicate square-ish shapes because we're not using a ruler. It's not going to be perfect. Probably right there. That's probably yeah. Okay, so luminesque, I am going to um, add these little kind of holly leaf um, type of petals, it's like a bells. And I am going to add along the line, this bump out two pointed uh, leaf like shape. And then I'll be doing that on the other side. So I'm going to do that on each one and you can do it section by section or you go down a line like I just did, up to you. So I'm going to do all of these. And again, I just have a light tap touch on my micron. And yeah, I'm going to do half a one, two. My printer, I'm sorry, is making, coming to life all on its own. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna turn my tile and I'm going to do the same thing now in the opposite direction. It makes these really cool negative shape spaces in the background, it's really quite beautiful. I do think my printer is haunted because there's nobody here using it. Very strange. And take your time. It might get a little confusing seeing where to go. So if it gets a little overwhelming, pause, take a deep breath, pick your pen up and continue. I feel like I always wind up missing a section, so we will find out shortly. Okay, so the next thing I am going to do, um, and this is where I'm gonna just start showing you some different things that you can do. So I'm going to start by putting down some different colors and I'm gonna have a 
paper towel and I have water off to the side and a paintbrush. So I'm gonna start with my Tombow 245. And I am going to just add um, I, I, this color. I don't really feel like mixing with my watercolors. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this and just start with um, a really light color on my knot. So I'm gonna wet my brush. I have a water brush, uh, paint brush, and I'm going to put some paint on my paint brush and then wipe it on this knot. Don't worry about it looking really flat right now and not a lot of dimension because we're going to be layering this up. So I just want to have a base coat down. Again, everything I do with color here is um, a suggestion. So feel free to do something different. You could also um, draw right on the paper if you wanted to, and I'll just show you. And oh, I might have a little bit of a waterlogged brush, and then I can pull it out the color as well. My um, marker is on its way out, it appears. That's okay though. We have just enough left in here for, <laughs> for us to get through this part. Okay, so it is really, it's pretty, pretty light, but that's okay. All right, so now I am going to just dry my brush off. Um, I'm gonna go actually to my watercolors. So I'm going to use pan watercolors. Um, and again, feel free to use what you would like. I'm going to set this off of the screen because it's very awkward how this container is designed. And as you can see, I'm flopping all over the place. <laughs> so I am going to set this to the side and um, that way we can still see my tile and we can work on this. Okay. And oh, I told you I would miss a spot. I see, I see one. There we go. I always, I always manage to miss one with the veils. Okay, so I'm going to take another um, shade of green. And again, we have lots of layers here. So we're gonna be building all this up. So this is like a brighter green. And I'm going to go over all of my Luminesque. Whatever brand watercolors you have are fine. And the less water you have on your brush, the brighter your colors are going to be. And the more water you have, the lighter they will be. 
So it's really a personal preference if it's watercolors you're choosing to work with. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And um, I did all reds and pinky tones on this tree and I'm going to do that again. Um, so I'm going to paint all of my jetties with some different shades of red. See, these are pretty bright, juicy watercolors. Rather than dabbing my paintbrush on my paper towel, I just went into another jetty to use up that paint. And again, everything looks really flat right now, but we're going to give it dimension. For years, I've always wanted a pink Christmas tree, not not the tree itself pink, but the um, like all silver and pink ornaments and beads and glitter. And I finally I don't have it in our main room, but I have it now a mini tree, like a four foot tree in my bedroom, in the master bedroom, which is nice. And reds, reds and pinks I find in the art world, be a little challenging to find exactly the color you want. My paper's starting to curl a little bit from the moisture and I'll just bend that back into shape after. So if you're using watercolor paper instead of the apprentice tile, you might have less warping. Not even, I'm not worried if this is running into the other jetties. Because again, we're going to be adding more to this. Believe it or not, these are different shades um, in my pan pastel, uh, excuse me, my pan watercolors here um, of reds, even though it's not really quite looking like it on the camera. All right, and while I have my watercolors here, I'm going to make my tree trunk brown. Again, maybe you're using colored pencils or markers. So go with what you are using. So I'll just put this aside for a moment. And while this is drying, I'm going to turn this upside down and I have a different color gold here that I'm gonna use that's a little bit more um, striking and it's a dual metallic hybrid. And I am going to color in my star with this. I think this whole thing would look really beautiful also in blues as if it was outside and it was dusk and it was like almost like a bluish silhouette, um, like a night sky. That might look really pretty. If you can envision what I'm seeing in my head. <laughs> and again, I'm still waiting for some things to dry. And I am going to go back to my Sakura jelly roll and I'm going to ink in this border, this aura, I should say, going all around this tree. This jelly roll flow is really nice, but I do like the dual metallic um, colors, the sparkle better, but I, had a, I have a plan. I'll sh show you with you my plan at the end. 
of what I'm going to do with this. This is going to have another layer that we're doing right now also. Be mindful of your hands, not touching anything that is wet. And if you have a hair dryer, you could use that, speed up the process of everything drying. I do that quite often. I always have next to my desk a hair dryer plugged in. Any lines, black lines later, I can go back in and touch up at the end. Okay. So I'm just going to pause this video for a moment and I'm going to use the blow dryer for this. I like the hair dryer also because I blow dry the front and the back and it um, gets rid of the curling of the paper. So that's quite nice as well. Okay, so I'm going to take a Prismacolor and I'm going to start with a grass green. It's number 909. And I'm going to where the overlapping of the knots are is going to be as if I was using graphite to make a shadow. I'm going to add green there and slowly start to take the pressure off of my hand to fade it into the color that's there to make it lighter. Okay, so you can see now this looks like it's behind and that looks like it's in front. So I'm gonna do that in each of these overlapped sections. Again, starting so that it's darker, taking the pressure off my hand, blending it out to make it lighter. You might need a darker green if you, or a different shade of green if your watercolor is darker. So go up a shade darker from what you have down on your paper. Or maybe you just have a different color there entirely, but use that same principle, that rule of thumb of going up a little bit darker. I'm also going to add a shadow with this green around the star. Using that same rule of blending with pressure. Okay, and I'm going to actually with that same green, that, that 909, these intersections, the negative space, the background pieces that the holly has um, created, these little leaves, I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Okay, so like that again, leaving the center 
lighter to let the watercolor show through. You could have, um, it, with the watercolor, you could have done a different color green on here, but again, I'm just showing you a variety of different art mediums. A medium is an art, what type of art supply you're using um, to give you choices. Maybe you've used all these and you're already aware, or maybe some of these are new for you um, and that's great. And maybe you don't have these supplies yet, but something might pique your interest. Um, and you might want to go out and get something. Maybe Santa will bring you something for Christmas. So now you can start to see and that the little leaves is a difference now they're popping up coming at us and I forgot the another piece of luminesque there we go And if I'm ahead of you, just pause the video. Don't rush, make it enjoyable, have fun. Maybe have some holiday music on in the background. Just be grateful that you're giving yourself permission to spend some time for yourself to create. It's really important that we self care and do things that bring us joy because they'll come out in the rest of our day. And while I'm on the screen, I'm going to bring out one last layer and I'm gonna take a darker green. I'm gonna take dark green, 908. <laughs> and as if this was a graphite pencil, again, with pressure um, and then getting lighter pressure as I come out, I'm going to add a shadow around my tree on the luminesque part. I'm not going to go into my white border. You certainly can if you want to, or you can put a little graphite on the white part instead. So just as if it's casting a shadow all around this tree. And less is more, because you can always go back and make something darker. So if you look at it, like I'm pausing and seeing where I should go back into, then you could um, add some more. I'm also going to darken in the side of the border a little bit. Again, this is being put on top of the luminesque. I don't want it to look like it's outlined. So again, I press darker along the edge and then I take the pressure off my hands. So if I'm 
pressing like this so as I start to come over, I, I gradually get lighter and lighter. Now on these jetties, I could really have a field day and do tons of colors, but I'm keeping it pretty basic. And I'm starting with a processed red. It's this pinky red color, it's like this. And again, where things are overlapped, I'm going to add a little bit of this. Again, with that pressure technique. And if I feel like it needs more of a contrast, then I will take a darker reddish or pinkish color. I'm using 925 Chrism Lake and maybe just adding again in some of these spots that are overlapped a little bit more darkness. And this one's standing out to me a lot. I didn't fade it enough. All right. Um, and for the last part of color pencil, I'm going to take a Sienna Brown 945 and add a little bit of a shadow ones are here and on the side. And these are all just suggestions for you. I am going to take a Sakura Silver Metallic and the auras on my jetties. I'm going to go in and just run a line of silver along that. Cool. And I am going to go back to my micron <clears throat> along the outside and anything I need to touch up, I can do that. This is probably the most challenging part for me, going back over lines I feel like I get a little nervous sometimes that it's gonna get too fat so just take your time and again I'm not doing it over the entire section I'm just doing where well, right now I feel like I am uh, where I feel like it needs it Let's just be careful of any wet jelly roll again. And I'll go to my Micron O1. And if I need to fix any of these lines by the silver, I can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to go to a Sephora 
Jelly Roll Stardust. So this is a glittery type of pen that you can apply over any color and it's going to give it some sparkle. So again, it's hard to see on camera, but I did this on this one on the leaf, the leaves. Oh, there we go. I got a good angle right there. So it's a little shiny. And I'm also, because I feel like this um, Sakura Gold is just not my personal preference. I'm adding a little bit over that as well. So I'm gonna start from the inside and work my way out. Um, so then that way my hand does not drag over anything. So right now it looks like I'm probably doing nothing, but <laughs> I am taking this and um, it is adding a layer of glitter. Again, it's just another little thing you can do for some more dimension. And then I'm going to, oops, it's not working, there we go. Um, every now and then you might need to scribble or rub it on your finger and make sure it's working. So I'm adding these onto my leaves. You don't have to be super precise. I'm, I'm really just doing it on the leaves that are bright. The ones that have a lot of, um, of the shading that were overlapped, I'm just gonna leave those. As you can see how pretty it looks in person, but if you're doing it how I am, then you know, because you have it right in front of you. All right, so again, it's kind of hard to see, but there is this beautiful shine to it. Really nice. I could go crazy with glitter, but I am going to just pause there. Um, my, my last suggestion, if you want, you could definitely just leave it like this, but if you wanted to add um, a few highlights, you can do that. You could use um, a white charcoal. You might want to go in and this is dry, add a little bit of white over it. Um, I, I did do that on here, but I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it on this tie. I'm gonna leave that off, but again, just offering a suggestion. Um, I am going to take a white uni ball and you can maybe go in and add a little line of highlights on some of these if you would like to. Again, I don't go crazy. I just kind of barely even touch the paper, but these little things just give it a little bit more dimension. And as I'm sitting here looking, I don't know if I, my, a lot of my reds come out very pinky, but what might be nice, this is another metallic, it's like a pinky red, but let's go with it because it, it might balance my watercolors. Um, maybe adding a little red dot in between where all these meet, that might look nice, I like that. Excited to see what you guys come up with. So just, you know, another building up the layers. Okay, so I think at this point, I am ready to go ahead and add my chop if I can find a spot to do that. Um, I, think I had more room last time. I'm actually gonna add it right on my tree. And don't forget to sign and date the back. Um, and again, I have these in the two different directions. And just a reminder, I am Danny Girl Art. I hope you had fun. Please tag me with your tiles um, and have a safe and healthy Christmas or holiday and a very happy and healthy new year.